Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy Collects Ghost Rider. And uh, again, this is kind of a reboot of our, our show because I actually did two episodes of this a year or a year and a half ago, back when I lived in my old apartment. And uh, I was missing stuff in the collection at the time. And I even missed a couple of things that I had in my collection that I didn't put in those episodes uh, because I hadn't, you know, organized completely the full collection. And so I kind of rushed into it. And so I figured, you know what, better to redo it, especially with all the Ghost Rider news coming out. We're going to get a new TV show uh, starring Gabriel Luna, who played Ghost Rider Robbie Reyes in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show. And I'm very excited because he's an awesome dude. I met him a couple times uh, at Lego and at Golden Apple Comics when I worked at Golden Apple and as a fan. And he's just really, really nice. And so I always support that guy. I'm excited for him in the new Terminator movie. I hope he kills it in that movie. And I can't wait to see what they do with this Ghost Rider show. So I figured with all that, it's definitely reinvigorated my interest in doing this show uh, because I've been wanting to do it for a while and I just kind of fell behind. And I figured this could be the format we do it in where we kind of just have my short box here and we line up all the books. And what, what I'll do is kind of the, what we do on the show is I'll show you the entire books from 1990 up to 1991. So everything that came out that, because uh, in, in Marvel Comics here, we'll start with the first issue so you have something to look at right away um, other than the toys and stuff. So up in the corner here, it says 1990. Like really, really small, right above the price and everything. Um, yeah, remember when comics were $1.95? <laughs> I did too, and they were awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, it says uh, 1990 right above there. So basically what I did was in May of 1990, when this, I mean, it didn't come out in May. I think this came out a little bit uh, before May uh, because usually they put like the month after or whatever. And so, uh, so anyway, what we'll do is everything that says 1990, will go from May to April. And then around April, I think they switch to like 1991, even though it's, it'll say like 1990 in the January and uh, February and I think March issues because they were just, you know, printing them in 1990, even though they were, you know, coming out in 91. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. So from May of 1990 to April of 91, we're going to call that Ghost Rider Year One. And so it starts right here with issue one uh, by uh, Howard Mackey. And these are the creators of the Dan Ketch Ghost Rider. And Dan Ketch is different, obviously, than Johnny Blaze. But we're going to find out as we go through the series that uh, that there is a very strong connection between the two. And as I go through this collection here, we'll put books up. And then what I want you to do is comment down below. After you see the full collection of year one, pick your three that you want me to talk about and leave them in the comments below. And I would say whatever three get the most votes or if only one person comments and there's three, uh, that then I will do episodes that are focused on just those issues. So that's what I want you to do. So just be patient, wait for the whole collection to be shown, and then pick you know which issues specifically you want to hear me talk about. And I'll do whole episodes on each one of those. And then we'll move on to the next year and we'll go forward like that. So hopefully you guys dig that, and uh, and without further ado, let's keep going here. We have issue one, like I said, came out in 1990, the birth of Dan Ketch. And in this story, he basically you find out that uh, Dan Ketch has a younger sister, and uh, there are, I think her name's Barbara. And it's been a while since I read these, but you know, bear with me. I'll, I'll try to reread some of them, especially when you pick them. Uh, that'll help refresh my memory too. And uh, or maybe his mom's name was Barbara. I can't remember, uh, but he has a girlfriend anyway, and uh, and a, and a sister. And his sister gets into trouble in this issue. And what happens is he's trying to save her. He finds this motorcycle in this junkyard and it has a weird crest on it. And when he presses it, when he bleeds on it, um, it actually transforms into the Ghost Rider. And you would think, oh, that's very coincidental. That's uh, very, you know, how that happened. Like, what are the odds or whatever? But they actually do kind of explain that throughout the series and with the minus one issue that we'll get later on as near the end of the series. So it's it's pretty, you know... I wouldn't say it's like super genius or whatever, but it, it works in a comic book kind of way. So, uh, but Dan, I really liked as a character. He's a kid from New York um, and, uh, you know, he has strong values like family values. And we find out that his family and where he comes from, his heritage is actually very big in why he gets chosen to be the new Ghost Rider, how he ends up kind of fate, you know, steering him to be the new Ghost Rider. So, uh, yeah, I really like the character a lot. He's awesome. And the, and the villains they bring into his world are fun, too. They bring some classic Ghost Rider villains and then some more modern ones. Uh, this one, I can't remember if this is the actual number two or if this is a reprinting. I think this is the actual number two uh, because there was a version of this that came with a toy in, like, the mid-2000s. They did a Ghost Rider, um, like, Marvel Legends figure uh, back when Marvel Legends, before they did, like, the new versions of them. And it had, like, a, a comic book with it. I think this is the original number two, but I think I have the comic book version 
uh, the, the version that came with the toy somewhere as well. Um, but they go for a pretty good amount. Like if you look these up on Mile High Comics, um, you probably saw in my last episode when I showed some of the footage, like these, this Ghost Rider series per issue, it, it can be very expensive. <laughs> this is a very expensive series to collect. It can be. I mean, for, for someone who works like, you know, nine to five and, you know, basically, uh, you know, makes minimum wage, it's a, it's a very pricey collection for someone like me. Um, so I'm very happy that after all these years, I was able to track down you know, all the issues. Uh, we have issue three here, uh, the the blackout. <laughs> the I think this is his, I don't know if it's his first appearance in the comics. I, he might've been there before, but uh, he was in one of the movies too. I think they did a version of him in the Spirits of Vengeance, uh, the second Ghost Rider movie, uh, whatever that one was called with Nick Cage. And I think he was a character that was used in it. Uh, not very well. I think those movies are are really terrible in my opinion uh, but on this show we'll definitely we'll review them i'll review both ghost rider movies for you guys and then any appearances ghost rider made outside of comics we'll we'll talk about as well um so yeah so we're just going through the first year here we have issue four of ghost rider versus mr hyde you know, jekyll and mr hyde um so yeah he's had an interesting rogues gallery but really i think what amps up ghost rider is that he interacted a lot with the, the marvel universe early on and that made him very interesting, uh, but also, uh, but also, like if some people felt like he was being crammed down our throats, like oh god, you just want us to like this guy. But I liked him; it worked on me because I thought Dan Ketch was very likable, and I think Ghost Rider is such a cool look. And the way they updated him with the new motorcycle and stuff, he just looked so awesome. Um, yeah, and I wouldn't even say he has like a '90s design because that's the thing about a lot of '90s comics or comics in general is they look like they're from the time period they're from, and. I don't feel that way with Ghost Rider. I, I think he has a very timeless look. He looks cool almost in any decade, which is amazing. That's really cool to pull that off. Um, so yeah, so like I said, he interacts with the Marvel Universe very early. We, this is the gold printing of uh, issue five. There is a regular print, a non-gold printing of it too. Um, but like I said, I, I don't care about having every version of things. Although I think maybe somewhere in another box somewhere, or maybe even back home, I have the non-gold one. Um, because when I moved back out here to California, I, I, I didn't have this full collection. Obviously, I only had like a, maybe a fourth of it or a fifth of it. So uh, any duplicate versions, you know, I was like, I got to only fit like one or two small boxes in my car before, you know, before driving back to California. So I couldn't bring everything. Um, but uh, but yeah, this is just so cool. So he meets the Punisher really early on. Issue five, you know, he's already interacting with the Marvel Universe. And you'll see as we go through his first year here, how much with the Marvel Universe he interacts with. So we start off, we're already five issues in, he's meeting the Punisher. And it's a two-part story as well. So we have the second part here, which is, uh, yeah, Texiera's art. So cool. Um, and I think they said, like, on one of the quotes was, like, people are like, oh, why does Ghost Rider smile all the time with that skeleton? And uh, and I think Howard Mackey said, as long as Mark Texiera is drawing Ghost Rider, he's never going to smile. Um which is awesome. It's, it's, he's not a, he's not a smiling reassuring character. He's not Superman. He's a, uh, he's probably even worse than Batman, probably on the level of Punisher to an extent. When he's Ghost Rider, it's not Dan Ketch really anymore. Um, it's another entity completely. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, so then we have that, we have, this is the Scarecrow, not to be mistaken for the Batman villain, Scarecrow. Um, I think that's probably why they never used him in either of the two movies was because they were like, ah, eh, Batman's already got a Scarecrow. We're not going to use this guy. I'm sure there's other reasons, mainly mainly because he's not that cool of a villain. Maybe that's also why they didn't use him. Um, but uh, but yeah, I don't know. I think about Ghost Rider a lot. I think he'll work as a TV series big time. Uh, I don't know if he'll work as a movie. I mean, you could do a movie, sure. They've done them before. Um, but I I think part of this, the intriguing thing of Ghost Rider is you want to you want to see him all the time. Like just seeing him in one two hour movie, I feel like is not enough of seeing Ghost Rider because uh, you're obviously going to have to have him turn from human to Ghost Rider back and forth, and you have to come up with all these like storylines of you know of why he can't be Ghost Rider in certain scenes and so forth. And I feel like in a show you could just get around that. You could just you could literally do a whole episode about Dan Ketch or Johnny Blaze or or you know Robbie Reyes or Alejandra, whichever Ghost Rider you want to do. Um, you could do a whole episode about them and have them never turn to Ghost Rider and it works because it's, you know, pacing of a TV show. So I think it could work. I think it'll be a great TV show, actually. Um, so now, boom, look at this already. Fantastic Four, number 347. What happens in this is the Fantastic Four get taken out um, and they go missing. And Spider-Man, Ghost Rider, Hulk, and Wolverine become the new Fantastic Four. <laughs> you can see them all down here. Um, they become the new Fantastic Four. What makes them qualified? 
to be the new Fantastic Four? Nothing, I would say, maybe. Um, I guess you kind of got like a, a sciencey person with Peter Parker and Hulk. You got kind of like your thing character, but he's also smart too, like Ben Grimm is. Um, I guess you got a guy on fire, like Ghost Rider. And then what, Wolverine's like the new Invisible Woman? <laughs> but yeah, they went with just like f four dudes uh to be the new fantastic four um but i don't care because like i said it was ghost rider and i liked him and it was so weird to me because he was the newest entry out of all these these characters have been around for years at this point uh wolverine you know over a decade uh, or so and they were all popular very popular ghost rider he almost felt shoehorned in but he worked it was awesome i, I loved it <laughs> so that's why when people get com you know complain about characters being shoehorned in i'm like give it a chance because you never know you could you could strike magic again like ghost rider did uh so yeah then we have uh blackout returns because again when the book first started he didn't have a ton of villains but uh they started building him up you know giving him more of his own villains and then with him interacting with more with marvel characters it was easier to bring some of those villains in at times which was nice. And then, of course, because the book was taken off and it was doing well and Marvel wanted it to continue to do well, they put Ghost Rider in Marvel Comics Presents. And this was one of those books that I, I really love this run. I, I have the entire run of Marvel Comics Presents. And when it started off, it was like short stories of like Cyclops and like random characters that couldn't sustain their own books. So I think a book like that serves a great purpose at a company like Marvel and DC. I wish they would. I know they're doing Marvel Comics Presents now, but it's like starring Wolverine, which is fine, but then they don't do, they do like Spider-Man and Captain America as the backup stories, or Venom and someone else as the backup stories, and you're kind of like, and I think they're bringing Dan Ketch back for like two issues, or an issue or so coming up, so I'll pick those up, definitely add them to my collection, but it's like, no, pick characters that you're supposed to get one big hitter, like Wolverine, and then you bring in characters like Iron Fist and other people that can't sustain their own books like on a monthly basis and you bring them in and you get people to be fans of them by by because they're buying it for wolverine but then they're like well i paid for it i might as well read the rest and then boom they get a ghost rider story so uh, and this is actually wolverine meeting ghost rider uh so even better because they're like you know they're already at this point appearing in the fantastic four book and people are like hey i want to see kind of them interact more like wolverine and ghost rider especially so marvel was like yeah we already had that plan dude so then boom here you go baptism of fire uh, Wolverine Marvel Comics Presents number 65. 64 was the last one. And then you have 66 here. And these books came out twice a month. I think every two weeks you got a new Marvel Comics Presents. And like I said, it's it's like a story or two stories on this side that are like eight page stories. And then you flip the book and there's ca other characters on the other side. Um, so yeah, I, I love Marvel Comics Presents. The, the book was so awesome. And it introduced me to a lot of Marvel characters like Iron Fist, who I had never would have known of outside of that book because you know when you're a kid and you're like oh i can only afford like two or three books um at the grocery store or at the comic store if there was one uh, i didn't live near one i bought a lot of comics at grocery stores um but uh you know you don't have the money to be buying a ton of stuff so having a book like marvel comics presents where you get four heroes in one book is definitely um, a good purchase and then boom there's the new fantastic four issue 348 ghost rider hulk wolverine and spider-man um what art adams uh artwork which is really cool enough said bub uh yeah it's just again just throwing ghost rider out there man they threw him in the deep end of the pool and that dude swam like crazy he swam because his book was on fire like no pun intended it was selling really 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 well um ghost rider number nine we have the x factor and the morlocks uh group so at this point the original five x-men like beast um Marvel Girl or Jean Grey, whatever you want to call it, her. Um, and then Cyclops, Angel, who is now Archangel, <clears throat> and Iceman. The five of them kind of created their own team called X Factor. And that's the book where Apocalypse was introduced. It was uh, written by Louis Simonson and some art by Walt Simonson in some of the books. So, um, and then I think like Rob Liefeld or, no, yeah, maybe he came in later. I can't remember. Um, or maybe he didn't. No, he didn't come in. I think he came in. Yeah, towards the end, that was X-Force. Yeah, sorry. I'm getting all my X-Men stuff confused right now. But uh, yeah, so they wanted to bring these characters in because I think Johnny Blaze met Angel, uh, the X-Men Angel, like way back in the original run. And this kind of has them to like the new Ghost Rider and the Archangel kind of meeting. And they touch on that again later on. I think like in, around issue 30 or something or 40 they bring Archangel in for a single issue to interact with Ghost Rider. And it's kind of cool because you have a demon and 
someone who looks like an angel. It's like, you love that contrast. Like I'm a big fan of contrast in storytelling. And, uh, and also it's kind of like an obvious thing. Like you're like, well, is there, are there any angelic characters in the Marvel universe that we can meet the uh, ghost rider? And it's like, sure. We got one on the X-Men. So let's bring him in. You have issue 67 of Marvel comics presents here. Wolverine and ghost rider. Once again, with death watch, which was like this clan of bad guys. And there was like a leader to them. And this is like kind of, you know, early on Ghost Rider stories, like with Blackout and all that stuff, like this was kind of who he was running into. So this was a way to have like Wolverine and Ghost Rider fight for an issue or two. And they're like, okay, now we're going to have them team up to fight a common enemy. So that's kind of what they do here um, in that book. But then you also have 68 Hog Wild, <laughs> which is, uh, I love the cover. And I love, I love how fun they had with these covers, like Hog Wild and stuff. Uh, they really played up the puns with uh, a lot of these, of, like these books in the 90s. Uh, but I was okay with that. Uh, next, we have Ghost Rider appearing in Spider-Man number six, drawn and written by Todd McFarlane. Uh, so it was only a matter of time when Todd McFarlane was like, hey, that new character seems interesting, that Ghost Rider guy. Like, any chance I could use him in, in a Spider-Man book? And Marvel's like, dude, Todd, you could draw whatever the heck you want, dude. <laughs> so in this storyline with Spider-Man and the Hobgoblin, uh, they bring it in. Look at all these awards this book won. Like, winner, winner, winner. Like, it, it won all these different um, comic book awards. Uh, Todd McFarlane was on fire at this point. That's why after, you know, this book, uh, he made this, like, 13 issues of this book, that he was like, all right, I'm going to go. I'm leaving Marvel. I'm going to go make my own company called Image. Uh, and so, he, yeah, he left, like, within six issues of this coming out. Uh, Todd McFarlane left to create Spawn. <laughs> so that's that's so cool. I, I love I love thinking about all the, that comic history stuff with those guys um, and just the guts and it took to like leave a, you know, a constantly paying job, like, you know, job security and leaving to go do your own thing is, is not easy to do. And those guys did it and, and still are succeeding today. So that's amazing. And then you have Fantastic Four 349. So the original Fantastic Four come back and they unite with the new Fantastic Four of uh, Ghost Rider, Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Hulk. It's Grey Hulk too. That's on a team. Um, and then, yeah, I think there's like a Punisher cameo in it or something like that. But yeah, so this, you get the original team back. So they were only gone for like two or three issues. And then in that time, you had these characters fill in. So of course I had to have those for my collection because, you know, it kind of progressed the Dan Ketch story. It showed him working with other heroes and being a member of a team for the first time, which comes in to play later because he'll join eventually the Midnight Suns with Blade and Morbius and uh, the Spirits of Vengeance and stuff. And so... It, it's cool. It's definitely the groundwork of him being a team player, which is, uh, yeah, it's good storytelling. I loved it. Um, and then here, you probably saw this in the last episode. We have the Mighty Thor number 429. So again, it says February. So this kind of came out in 1991. But since it's, I count it as part of the first year of Ghost Rider, that's why it's in this uh, fold here with these other comics. Um, so yeah, pretty early on, they bring Dan in. And it's weird because in these books, they don't specifically say it's Dan, but it's definitely Dan because <laughs> you can tell by the design and everything. Uh, and he interacts with Thor and it's in this book, he's only in it for like a page or two, but you will see him. We'll talk about more when he comes up in the next issue. Uh, but then we have Ghost Rider number 10. So again, this is like issues pretty much one through 11 or one through 12 of Ghost Rider. So his first year, and this all happened in his first year. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, so you could see like Marvel really pushed this character. They were like, no, we're, we believe in this. And, and, and even if we don't believe in it, we're doing it anyway. <laughs> and we're going to hope it sticks. And man, did it stick. I, this character, when people think of Ghost Rider, they think of Dan Ketch. Like, it's funny. Like when I would say like the masses, like not, not co some comic book fans, they're like, no, I'm, I'm a Johnny Blaze fan. I think of Johnny Blaze. And especially if they came in with the movies came out, uh, that was Nick Cage being Johnny Blaze. And they decided to bring Johnny Blaze back in the comics. And Dan Ketch kind of disappeared for years until thankfully Jason Aaron came along and decided to bring Dan Ketch back, which was amazing. I'm so glad he did that. Um, so that Dan Ketch could still be a character. Uh, you know, in comics today, which is awesome. So big, big shout out to Jason Aaron for doing that. It was, that's very cool of him to do uh, and not forget that Dan Ketch existed. But I would say outside of that, like, you know, it's like a Wally West, like a lot of people, when they think of Flash, they think of Wally West. And, uh, and that's like people who just kind of have a, a basic knowledge of comics, I would say. 
And I would say that with Ghost Rider, when they think of images of Ghost Rider, they typically think of the 90s Ghost Rider because he, his book sold really well. His bike is very distinct looking. His look with the spikes on him is very distinct. Um, the you know chain wrapped around him. These are elements, some of them, that were in the original Johnny Blaze one, but just really amplified in the newer version. So, uh, so yeah, so a lot of times when people are like, oh yeah, Ghost Rider, and they'll talk about him. I'm like, oh, that's weird. That's the Dan Ketch version. I'm like, yeah, but I like Johnny Blaze. I'm like, well, everything you just said is from Dan Ketch. So, uh, so that's kind of fun to see that he made that much of an impact. Uh, then we have Marvel Comics Presents number 69. Uh, again, continuing that story. Like I said, these came out every uh, two a month. So that's why I'm, you know, and I'm splitting them up. These are the books in order as they came out, like as close as I could get to them actually coming out. Um, so that's why they're broken up like this. But yeah, so, and then number 70. I think that might be the last issue of Marvel Comics Presents, at least for now that Ghost Rider was in, because Wolverine pretty much took over that book. It was mostly a Wolverine book. Um, but that was cool too, because I liked Wolverine. That like, explains why I like Wolverine so much, actually, was because I bought this book constantly. Um, and then, boom, issue seven of Spider-Man. So part two of the Hobgoblin story, but this time Ghost Rider's actually on the cover. He's in the last issue. I think he might even be on the back cover of the last issue, but in this one, he's right there front and center uh, with Spider-Man jumping out of the way. <laughs> it's such a cool image. It's such cool. Only only Todd McFarlane could do that. It's so good looking. Um, and then we have the this that was in the last episode that you probably saw, Amazing Spider-Man Hit and Run number three. I still haven't read it. I mean, I'm recording this actually right after that last episode. Uh, so I was just like, yeah, screw it. I have time. Let's do it now. So uh, yeah, Hit and Run number three. Never read it before. And, you know, but maybe maybe it'll be a pick of yours. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments so far of what you know, your three, I have only a couple issues left. So, so start making your list now and then let me know down in the comments of which three you want me to review or that you'd like me to talk more about. Uh, and then I'll open them up and we'll do whole episodes on them. Um, so boom, Ghost Rider number 11 there. And uh, you can see Dan Ketch kind of in the background, Hex Lies and Inner Escape. So this is kind of dealing with uh, the struggle of being Ghost Rider. So yeah, a lot happened in Dan's first year of comics, that's for sure. Um, then we have four number uh, Thor number 430. And uh, this is the second part to the Ghost Rider story. And in this one, it's funny, Ghost Rider's not in it too much, but it's kind of neat because you see Loki and Mephisto at this time in the comics, they were working together and uh, they had worked together before too. So they kind of team up and try to manipulate these two into fighting each other uh, and the Wrecking Crew shows up. And so the two of them do fight briefly, but, uh, but then Ghost Rider helps Thor out. Uh, you know, it's very brief of a fight and they go right into fighting the Wrecking Crew. Um, so yeah, so, so and Ghost Rider even mentions like, yeah, I fought them before. And I think that was, I don't know if that was Fantastic Four or one of the other books he appeared in, but he was like, yeah, I fought these guys before and they got away. So now I'm here with Thor to take them down. And Thor is like, yeah, I'm not going to let you get vengeance on them. Uh, you know, we're just going to arrest them and bring them to the authorities. And Ghost Rider's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> like we're, we're allies today, but if you get in my way of serving vengeance again, you know, we might not be. So yeah, they kind of very male, gruff, testosterone kind of storytelling there. Uh, but it works because Ghost Rider looks so awesome and Thor is just like a big <laughs> buff dude. Um, and then, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. We had one issue left. The Marvel Comics Presents number 71. And just to have it in my collection, actually, that all that Ghost Rider stuff, all the Wolverine, Ghost Rider, Marvel Comics Presents, they actually put that in a trade paperback right here called Acts of Vengeance. It was six ninety five when it first came out. I found this on eBay for like maybe $8 and uh, $2 of shipping, which was so nice of whoever that seller was to do this. This is the first printing of, uh, this is what kind of trade paperbacks looked like back then. They were just like, they weren't really called graphic novels. Um, they were just called trade paperbacks and or collections. And so this was the collection of Ghost Rider Wolverine. So I was like, yeah, I have to get it so I can do it all in one sitting. And in case it's a pick of your guys, you know, I was like, oh, you know what? If people pick, you know, so they don't have to pick one issue of this run, they could pick the whole run and I could do a whole episode on that if you wanted to. So again, if so, let me know in the comments below. Um, then we have Doctor Strange and Ghost Rider Special. So this is actually a reprinting of Doctor Strange issue 28. Doctor Strange, the 90s run is amazing. It's actually one of my uh, favorite 90s comics uh, out there, although it had a lot of ups and downs. Um, so Ghost Rider definitely is more of a favorite of mine because I thought it had way more ups than it had downs. Doctor Strange had some ups and downs depending on the story and the writer and the artist and stuff. So Doctor Strange at this point was doing okay, but wasn't great. Issue 28 came out and Ghost Rider appeared in it and the issue sold out. Uh, so so it turned a lot of heads to Ghost uh, to Doctor Strange's comic, uh, the people who weren't reading it. And uh, that issue sold out. So what they decided to do, instead of 
kind of doing a second printing, they decided to make a new number one and do Doctor Strange and Ghost Rider special. And they just reprinted Doctor Strange 28 in here. So that's why I don't own Doctor Strange 28. I think I had a very low print run. So trying to find a copy is a little expensive, uh, depending. I mean, I can find some on eBay for, for fairly cheap. But I figured I got the story here. And Ghost Rider's name is in the title. And so that works for my collection a lot. So, uh, so yeah, this is just a reprinting of Doctor Strange number 28. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's cool. And the same cover, just with slightly different colors on it. So you see Doctor Strange down here. And this is the first time they're meeting. And it's fantastic. And they meet again pretty soon after this because issue 12 of Ghost Rider comes out. And boom, Doctor Strange is in it. Like, literally, like, a week or two later. So, uh, so yeah. And they go on to build a pretty good friendship uh, in, in a way. Like, a, kind of like a mutual uh, ally kind of thing. But, uh, but a little bit of a friendship there, too. And it made me like Doctor Strange. Like, uh, that was a character I probably never would have paid attention to uh, at all until, you know, till the movie came out. Even recently, I, I liked the movie. I thought it was really cool. So, uh, but the comics, I would have never paid attention to him if it wasn't for Ghost Rider. Uh, he, he introduced me to Stephen Strange, and I've been a, a fan of that character for, for ever since. So, uh, and then lastly, the last book that came out, April, uh, is Moon Knight number 25, Mark Spector Moon Knight. And uh, Ghost Rider appeared in this. The Fist of Khonshu meets the Spirit of Vengeance. And uh, yeah, that's actually a really fun book. Moon Knight's a great character if you don't know. He's got a uh, dual identity uh, disorder or disassociated identity disorder, or multiple personality disorder. He's uh, he's He's got that going on. And he's, you know, trying to be a superhero at the same time. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's he's very interesting. I, I know a lot of people want, like, a TV show of him, and I agree. I think that would be really cool. Uh, but hopefully he'll maybe he'll pop up in Ghost Rider, the new Ghost Rider show coming out. Uh, that I think him as a cameo character could be a good thing for him as well. So, yeah, let me know what you think. You know, I, I this is the first year of Ghost Rider books. Uh, basically everything from May of 1990 up to April of 1991. So the first 12 issues and then all of the tie-ins that I currently own. I'm definitely missing a couple, I think, that fit in here, maybe one or two. Um, but uh, but for the most part, this is like the main bulk and, and the main story of Dan Ketch. So I want to hear what you think down below. Let me know. Pick three of these books that we went through. If you need to go back and you know watch through or hopefully you took notes while you were watching this. Uh, if you wanted to, if you want to get that invested in the show, I'd love to have you guys interact with me more. That's why I came up with this show and to do it in this format because I want to interact with you guys more. So let me know in the comments below which three issues you want me to talk about. And the next three episodes will be about me reviewing those three books. Uh, and then we'll come back and we'll do year two and then so on and so forth. So again, let me know down in the comments below and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in hell. Peace.